up to the post-game rundown from the Blue Jays game I went to back on September 29, 2024 against the Miami Marlins. Before we get to this one, watch guys to please leave a like us those guys if you're new. Hit the notifications here, comment down below if you guys have any thoughts game I went to. If you guys are at the game and thoughts and feelings, guys have in general on this post-game rundown, feel free to leave a comment section below. I'd like to hear you guys down there. Alright guys, this is jump right into it. Let's get into my overall thoughts and feelings on this game I went to. And we're just going to get straight into it guys. So, here we go. My final overall thoughts for baseball for 2024. I can't believe the season's already over guys. It's crazy knowing that now that I went to the last game and the season's over. I mean, it was crazy. The first ever final game I ever went to. It was a nice day. I mean, beautiful day. Yeah, it was a nice day to go out to the ballpark one last time for the Jays. You know, it was nice. Roof ended up being open. It was a great day, you know. Overall, like, it, day was really good. Like, it was a really nice day at the ballpark there. And, yeah, it was a nice day on Sunday. It was a really nice day to go. And, yeah, you know, overall, the weather was great. And, you know, going to the ballpark, you know, went inside. We saw, like, a few different, like, photo things. Yeah. And they were, like, giving out, like, fr like McCain's fried coupons. And, yeah, it was kind of cool. I mean, even though it wasn't a Friday because they don't really sponsor the Friday night games. But, yeah, that was pretty cool. Oh, man, it was a huge line to get the photo. So I was like, yeah, it's not worth getting a photo. Because I always just wanted to look around the stadium, guys. You know, it was my last time there. Everyone's last time there for 2024. So I had to soak it all in, you know. You really had to take it all in for the last time, you know, in this year. And, you know, at least we're not losing our team. Like, okay, like I said in the videos, like I said in the vlog, I'm very sorry for Oakland fans. I feel very bad for you guys losing your team. And, yeah, that, that's harsh. I mean... You know, screw John Fisher, right? I just want to say that, you know. I understand why you guys want the team to be sold. I wish it was sold too, but unfortunately, that's just not what's going to be happening. So it is what it is there. But sorry for Oakland fans. But anyways, moving on from that. But yeah, it was still bittersweet regardless. I still, it was still bittersweet because the team has not been good this year. You know, they just, I mean, their offense has been bad. I mean, I don't know. I mean, they signed, like, at the beginning of the year, it looks like they were going to be a World Series contender, and we're ending off with a 74-88 and 88 record, 14 games under 500. So, it's not good. Uh, it was not. It was no good this season, you know. Just the whole season overall, it's just, it was bad. It's very bad. But anyways, you know, I went around the 100 level, looking good, as always. Saw the City Connect shop. I love the premium entrance. Like, whoever it goes down to the pre premium entrance this year, I mean, you guys... You guys got some good seats. That, that area looks sick. Like, I'm telling you, if I could ever go down there, it would be an absolute honor. I really hope I can do that one day. That would be really nice. Maybe next year, 2025 or 26. We'll see. But, yeah, all the renovations were nice this year. I mean, they make, they actually did a lot on the 100. They did a good job on the renovations. So, And, yeah, with the new section signs, of course, I actually, yeah, I realized that because they added more sections with that. I thought, like, I literally, like, previously, I thought it was just because of, I literally just did 2019, but they added more sections because they had to chase the seating design, so I can't really blame them there. So yeah, I saw 100 looking good as always, you know, went up to 200 level, went to the WestJet flight that they actually did have the arcade games like they normally have on Sunday and the basketball thing, and that's cool, they had the, that was kind of cool, you know, I got to see that too, got to see pinball, we didn't really play that much, I mean, we sometimes play pinball, but didn't play it today, I guess, yeah, just, yeah, or not today, that, that day on Sunday, sorry, I mean, yeah, I keep thinking it's today, but, you know, it's not, but, come on, the Jays gear, maybe I'm getting confused, but, yeah, 200 level is pretty basic, then, not, when, then we went up to the 500 level, did the challenge for the final time, gave a few shout-outs, of course, to MBJN, just want to thank you for all your support this year, Mr. Blue, uh, yeah, MBJN, I almost slipped up, but, thanks for your support this year, MBJN, I appreciate it, but, yeah, and then went up there, you know, got the challenge, and then went for one last lap around the 500 level, you know, went through the Park Social, and I, and, yeah, you went through Park Social, and then went through the Corona rooftop patio, so, yeah, we did, yeah, we looked, those two things were last time, look at the City Connect wall behind the square, that's so cool how they made it, like, a City Connect, like, whoever painted that, 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 that takes some skill, but, yeah, whoever painted the City Connect stuff on that wall, like, between Park Social and the, uh, Corona rooftop near, like, it's probably, it's basically right behind the scoreboard, guys. But yeah, like, basically, whoever did that, honestly, I'll give them a lot of props. Give them a lot of credit. Whoever did that, good job to you. And then, yeah, so, yeah, I went through Corona. Looked pretty nice. I like Park Social better. If you're going to ask me what I like better, I like Park Social a little better. Because Corona's more like just, it's more, it's not as good, honestly. I mean, even, like, Park Social have the video games, too, obviously, so... It clearly wins in my book. If I were to have an opinion, I just want to say that Park Social for the first two years of the renovations in the outfield district, definitely have to say that's better, 100%. But 
I mean, I never watched a game from there. I mean, it would be kind of cool, but it's basically like first come, first serve. So it's like, it's almost like a standing room only section. Like, there's so many standing room areas, you know, there's a lot there. So, but, you know, Roger Center did a good job, especially with the outfield district. They definitely did a good, good job with it. <laughs> But yeah, you know, got to see that for the last time, and then went to our C's. Five twenty six, row seven. I thought row seven was gonna be higher. That was definitely the highest I ever sat for a game, and it actually was still good. Only seven rows. That was still that was still decent. I I still like that, even though it was the highest I ever sat at a game so far. That was still good. Five twenty six, and yeah, right behind the plate, pretty much. And yeah, it was, it was good. It was a good spot, you know, like base, like basically behind the plate, and then going towards third baseline a little bit, but. Definitely, like, the 520s are really good. Like, like from, like, 522 to 527 or 28, those were, like, the best seats up there. I definitely recommend all those sections for sitting down. Unless you want to go to the outfield district. And, yeah, if you want to do an outfield spot, I say Park Social, in my opinion. But, yeah, you know, it was a bittersweet day, you know. I just want to say it definitely was a bittersweet day. I was, feel, I was, I was a little sad after the game, too. I mean, like, but we'll get to that in a moment. But, you know, I want to get to all the things that happened during the game, too. So that was basically the pregame stuff. So not to get into really quickly, I don't want to make this too long for you guys either because it's the last video and the team is well done. And yeah, they're cooked. They're officially done for the year at this point. But just want to say what happened during the game a little bit. I liked how the... I thought they were going to do this at the end, but they actually played the video of all the memories of the game, like of the other 80 home games that they had before, obviously, game number 81. They did all the memories, saw like some of the moments I saw, I saw Addison Barger and Loper Fido on there, the walk-off home runs, and then, you know, saw a lot of the other stuff that they did, saw Canada Day flight, they did everything, they showed every little moment that they did, like, well, not every little bit, but like, you know, all the big games, you know, like Canada Day, you know, stuff like that, right? Yeah, I saw them, like, celebrating the walk-offs that they had, saw the Rudy Clement walk-off hit against the Rangers after we lost 13 to nothing. so saw that, and, you know, that was, that was good. That, that was that was a good tribute. Then the players came out of the dugout. You know, they're tipping their hat. Like I, think they, I think some of them took off their hats, and they were, like, tipping the cap to the fans. Because we've been through a lot this year. Even, like, Tim Langton, the PA announcer, said, like, don't open or close, ups and downs. Like, yeah. You know, and he said, thank, we thank you, the best fans in baseball. I mean, we're the best fans in Canada. I think the Jays fans have the best fans in the whole country. I'm just going to say it. They really do, because they're everywhere. Like, they're in Seattle watching the team in Seattle. They're in Minnesota watching them you know, against the Twins. Like, people from, like, Winnipeg like I'll go down to Minnesota to watch the Jays. And then, like, people from, like, Vancouver go to Seattle. So, it's pretty cool. You definitely see them throughout the country, because they, they really come out to Seattle. So, like, you see it. Like, they're loud in Seattle. But, yeah, you know, the fans are really passionate. Uh, I mean, the Leafs fans are pretty good, too. I mean, the Leafs fans travel a lot, but... Jays fans are probably the best and probably one of the best fan base in baseball, if not the best, and in Canada as well. So definitely the best fan base in the entire country. I will definitely say that. I'm confident with saying that the Jays are probably the best fan base in Canada. There's no question about it because we've been through a lot. You know, they get a lot of love and support throughout the country. Very popular team. So, yeah, definitely got to give them respect for the tribute. And, you know, thanks to the Jays as well. I just want to thank, you know, everybody. But... I know a lot of people are, like, saying I hate John Snyder and all that. I'm not a fan of John Snyder, Ross Atkins, or Mark Spire, but a lot of people are saying they're going to stick around, so that's not good news. I mean, we'll hope maybe one of them leaves, but I kind of doubt it. I mean, they're saying that. I wouldn't be surprised, so I'm like, yeah, it is what it is. But, I mean, it was nice, all the players coming out and all the staff, you know, tipping the cap, and then we also got to thank the field crew as well after the third inning. They said, yeah, they said, yeah, we got to thank these guys for what they did. And yeah, honestly, respect to the people who like like go there early to the ballpark, take care of the field, the field crew, on field crew, you know, grounds crew, get groundskeepers, whatever you guys want to call them. But gotta get respect to every single one of them as well. You know, they did a lot of great work throughout the year, even though the team has been bad. They you know, I mean, they sacrificed a lot of time, so you gotta give them credit as well. They had to come there early, they had to stay there late for night games, so. I gotta give them a lot of credit too. You know, great job by the field crew. The cleanup crew for the Jays. And yeah, or every ground screw in baseball. I'll just say every ground screw in baseball props. Every single team. I'm like, even the A's. Like everybody. Every single ground screw. Got to give a lot of credit, a lot of props, but especially the Jays guys. Because, you know, they're my team and they've been, you know, they've been they taking care of the field for my team to play games. So, and Canada's team to play games. So, 
that was really special as well. I really liked that. I really liked the tributes that they had. You know, that was nice. And, you know, even pregame. It was almost like a June, June Chase Sunday because they did the lineups. I kind of missed it a little bit in the intro. And then they even had, like, the Junior Chase starting lineup still like it, like it normally was, so, like, on Sunday games. So it was almost like a Junior Chase, but they just call it fan appreciation, I guess. Yeah, as a 307 game because I just figured this out recently that MLB... On the last day of the season, on like the last Sunday of the season, regular season, they want every team to play at 3 o'clock. Even though there was two delays, I saw it. The Yankees and Pirates were delayed, and the Guardians and Astros were delayed. So, like, like you can't really control that. If it's weather, you can't control it. But MLB wants every team to play at the same time the last day, if possible, I guess. So, I guess there's a rain delay. They can't blame those teams, but... Yeah, you know, um, yeah, so basically, yeah, because it's for playoffs, so it's like they don't want to have a competitive advantage for some teams trying to make the playoffs, even though, the, actually, I'm filming this the next day after I went to the game in the Mets, and the Braves are about to play a, a doubleheader today, they had some severe weather, there was a hurricane down in Atlanta, so, you know, it seems like everything's fine there now, because they played a series against, I think, who is it, the Royals? Yeah, the Royals. Yeah, so it seems like everything's fine in Atlanta now, so I think they can play that series. But I guess you have to be, you better be safe than sorry, guys. You got to get off. It's dangerous. You can't play. But, yeah, other than that, you know, got to see the last seventh inning stretch. And then even the message at the end when we were leaving from Tim Langton. Say so thanks for all the memories and all that. I don't know. He said something about thanks. But I like what he did there. That was a nice chester at the end. And, yeah, we already saw the dome close. It was like the last pitch was thrown. They already started closing the dome. And that was it. GG's. But anyways, guys, I'm going to quickly get through the score. And I don't, wait, I don't waste any more time. And it was cool to see Jake Berg as well. He was leaving off as well. And also, I just want to say one more thing. Ryan Burr. That's so cool, though, how he has the same warm-up song as Justin Steele from the Chicago Cubs. Because if you guys remember that vlog, he literally had the same song. It was a Johnny Cash song. I forgot what it's called, but it's by Johnny Cash. But it's a good song. I really like that song. So I'm kind of happy that Burr got to use that as well. Like, it was nice. I don't know how Justin Steele would feel about that. But that was pretty cool. I was like, I was like, yeah, I recognize this from Chicago. I knew it was Justin Steele's song right away. And it reminds me of Rain as well. I know that song reminds me of Rain Delays as well. My first Rain Delays. So that's fun. And then, yeah, I got to... Remember Wrigley Field. That song really makes me remind me of Chicago and Wrigley Field and the rain delays on that second game. So that was cool. That was cool to see that from Ryan Burr as well. Thank goodness I didn't see Chris Bassett. Ryan Weathers, just want to give credit to him as well. He did really good. I'll just be honest. It was basically a snooze fest for the Jays. But anyways, before we get to the score, I just want to say the final scores. Yeah. So the final score for this game, for the final time this year, one, game 162. Unfortunately, the Jays ended up dropping it, so my record is unfortunately a losing record this year. Four wins, five losses. But you know what? Considering the team hasn't been good in all nine of my games or Jays games, I did pretty good for myself this year. I'm not going to lie, guys. I did good. Final score was Miami. Yeah, the final score was the Miami Marlins three, and the Toronto Blue Jays won. Three, one loss. At least we didn't get shut out, but it was definitely looking like it for a while. But we got lucky in the seventh inning. You know, got lucky in the seventh, but we'll get into that in a moment. But... All right, let's get the score in. We're not going to waste too much time if it gets a little bright. I'm sorry. Top first. This is basically most of the offense right here. Jonah Bryan uh, singled on a ground ball. And then uh, Edward, uh, Berger and Edwards came in to score on the play. Those two guys have been, I mean, especially Xavier Edwards, like with three triples in one game on Friday is insane. 2 nothing Marlins. And that was basically most of the offense right there. That was basically like half of it right there because four runs in the game. So that's already like half of it. And I want to mention right here, top of the six, Otto Lopez, the former Jays prospect. We were definitely recognizing him. I mean, maybe nobody else gave a damn because I, I know I can understand why. But me and my grandpa were definitely remembering him. And we were definitely like, yeah, this is this is cool to see him back. I mean, yeah, we haven't seen him since that game. because I've never seen the Marlins play until yesterday. So, yeah, then Otto Lopez went double, uh, basically. Yeah, giving the Marlins a little assurance. And Jonah Bryan came in to score. He got the double earlier. And made it 3 nothing, And that basically put it GG's. But Jays would actually not get shot out. We actually got a little lucky here. It was a ground out. And Joey Loperfino ended up grounding out in the bottom of the seventh. So yeah, it's, yeah, bottom seven. Joey Loperfino uh, grounded out. And then De La Santos. Uh, yeah, I think he, they, yeah he, that's his word. I think they messed up the play a little bit. And then De La Santos came in to score. And then, yeah, Barroa went to second. I think that's where they messed it up with Barroa. I think that's when they messed it up. So, yeah. De La Santos came to score. It was really cool to see him for the first time as well. And Tyler Heineman. I actually never seen Heineman play in his three years that he came here. Never seen him play. 
So yeah, Loper Fido ground up. They messed up the play. And then, and then Bro went to second, and then Dio Santos scored on the play. Breaking the shutout, making it a 3-1 game, but that's it. That's all she wrote, and I'm not even going to bother. But, yeah, Jays end up losing the game. Final game of the year, no home runs at all. That sucks. So no more home runs for me till next year at this point. So it is what it is. I had a tough year with home runs, guys, especially at home. It's been a real struggle, guys. I'm really hoping I can have a rebound year next year with that. But we'll see how it goes, I guess. If the team can get better, then I think I'll be feeling a little bit more confident with that. But my confidence wasn't there all, all year. I'm just going to be honest, guys. Especially with the lineup against Oakland, I had literally no confidence in most of it anyways. Like, I only had confidence in, like, the top five. Other than that, not much. Even this game, there was some guys I wasn't feeling too confident in, you know, like... Dio Santos, okay, but I wasn't really expecting too much. I was not expecting to hit a home run, so. And Heinemann, too, he can't really get it out of the park. You know, like, those guys are more base hit guys. Like, they're not really going to hit it out too often. So, it is what it is. Vlad also, I want to say, couldn't get to 200 hits, so that sucked. He had, like, four at-bats or something like that. And yeah, I couldn't connect on any of them. He got to walk. Everyone was booing the guy that walked him in the eighth. It was a sad day for Vladi. It was kind of a sad day for him, too. I was really hoping to see it, but 199, they say, was still good. So, yeah, it's still good. He still did good. Vlad still got over 30 home runs. I think it was like 30 or 31 home runs. So, he still did good. Had a rebound season in the home run department. You know, he did what he could this year. So, honestly, thanks to Vladimir in the jersey right now. So, yeah, thank you to Vladimir Guerrero Jr., you know, for your efforts this year as well. So, you got to give a lot of credit to you as well. But, it was a tough game. You know, it was a tough game to watch. And that's it. It was basically a snooze fest. One run on four hits. So let me see how many hits they got. They got, I think it was nine. Yep, three on nine hits for the Marlins. One on four hits. Again, for the Jays back-to-back -back days to end off the season. But, you know, guys, I mean, I don't really have too much else to say. I know this getting a little long, guys, so I'm sorry. But just want to say one more thing. Just want to say thank you a lot to you guys for a great 2024 season. Actually, one more thing. I want to say you got Ryan Yarbrough real quick. Ryan Yarbrough actually did come in after, yeah, um, Ryan Burr. Just want to say this real quick about Ryan Yarbrough. He did really good. You know, he didn't give up any runs. You know, he went to, like, I think he went from, like, the second to the top of the fifth inning. So, he did pretty good. He went a few innings. You know, he couldn't get out of the fifth, I think. So, they just decided to go to the rest of the bullpen. Got to see Dylan Tate. And I also got to see Brandon Iser. That was pretty nice to see Brandon Iser. I think Noah saw him in a game as well, actually, on his birthday. Yeah, his birthday game. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, it was on the 17th. Yeah, he saw him on the 17th. That's right. His major league debut, actually. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, I got to see Iser, you know. That was pretty cool to see him. And I think he was actually the last pitcher for us this game. But yeah, like it doesn't matter. Team's done. GG's. Uh, we'll see what we can do in the offseason. They're saying we might get Soto. Maybe maybe Alex Bregman. I mean, we'll see. I hope. In a way, it would be nice if we can get both those guys. But we'll see. We'll see if the team can compete. I'm not believing that we're going to compete yet until I see a, until I see real bats come in the lineup and actually provide offense. I'm not going to believe it until I see it, guys, at this point. But, all right, guys, let's get around this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys didn't watch you guys, stuff, please leave a like on this video. If you're new, hit locations here. Comment down below if you guys have any thoughts. Give it one, two. If you guys are at the game, any other thoughts or feelings, guys, have a channel on the game. What you like, what you not like from the game. And on the season, on the 2024 season, since it's now over. So, yeah, since now 2024 season's over, I can't even wish the team luck. But, yeah, you know, good luck to the Jays in the offseason. I'm going to say that. And also, I want to say, instead of saying the Jays good luck for the rest of the year, since that's done now, good luck to everybody in the playoffs, including the Tigers who broke their nine-year curse. I really hope they do well, and I'm hoping the Dodgers do well as well. I'm really rooting for the Dodgers and the Tigers in the playoffs. Those are going to be my top two teams in the playoffs for sure. And maybe the Guardians, maybe the Guardians as well. That's another team. We got a couple Nailers from Canada, Bo Naylor, Josh Naylor from Canada. So, hoping they do good for the Guardians and you know, and the Brewers as well. It's another team I want, but definitely not the Astros. Astros can go on the first round, hopefully, and in, in the ALDS if they if they're probably in, they're probably gonna get in the ALDS. I would I would assume, and hopefully if it's the wild card, even better. But we'll see how it happens. But. You know, guys, just want to say thank you one more time for a great 2024 season. I know it wasn't great. You know, I mean, I wish the content would have been better. But thank you guys so much for all the support. I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Thank you guys so much, all baseball fans and Blue Jays fans, for all the support 2024. And that's pretty much going to do it, guys. I don't really have too much else to say. Just good luck to everyone in the playoffs and the ALDS and wild card series coming up. Good luck to everyone who is remaining. And that's it, guys. So have a great day, guys. And I will see you all next year 
in 2025 for the Toronto Blue Jays, unless there's something else, well, definitely for the Jays, but if anything happens for baseball, I will definitely let you know, guys. If something crazy happens, I'll be here letting you know. But anyways, guys, that's good, dude, guys. So have a great day, guys, and I'll see you guys next time. So let's go, Blue Jays, and we'll see you guys next year in 2025. Peace! Well, Buck, I think he's going to put the jacket on. Back to Steve. Shot!